yo so thank you so much for the support on the latest video i really appreciate that and let's make this video reach around i don't know 120 likes would you do that i'm counting on you and if you like that video actually you now subscribe maybe you'd see more cool content like this all right so in this one we're not gonna like you know do the normal comparison between intel and amd it's just you know reasons people still recommend amd over intel even though you know amd doesn't have the best gaming performance and there is a big chance that it will bottleneck the next rtx 3000 series gpus we're gonna get straight into it and you gotta press that like button and subscribe so hey do yourself a favor man it's pretty cool in here so the reason is or like let's call it what intel is better than amd at they are faster by 15 percent with an rx or with an rtx 3070 so when we get with like a higher end gpus like an rtx 3080 or 3090 we're gonna like this gap may or may not you know go higher so yeah this is a pretty big advantage for these intel cpus and i'm talking about the i5 10600k the i7 10700 which is like a cpu that no nobody uh, mentioned but it's a really powerful and a capable cpu in some ways and yeah this is it they are much better at the fps intensive games a game like fortnite warzone i will be looking at 240 frames per second 360 even and they are the go-to gaming cpus for streamers like booga or whatever like pro gaming streamer you are watching right now so yeah this is like the biggest reason people still go for intel because they provide really good performance at gaming uh, when you look at these fps intensive games and that's about it really there isn't any reason why i should go for intel over amd other than that so yeah with that out of the way what amd is better than intel at well the third gen cpus and the fourth gen cpus support pcie gen 4 and this is something that intel doesn't support only the next gen rocket lake cpus and its intel 11th gen will support pcie gen 4 um, you know nevertheless uh, pcie gen 4 versus pcie gen 3 will not affect the game performance that much or whatsoever uh, i mean at least when we're looking at a gpu like an rtx 3070 gen 3 versus gen 2 is pretty much the same so i'm pretty for gen 3 versus gen 4 will not do that difference you know maybe when the rtx 3080 3090 drops uh, that gap will go bigger but i don't assume so but hey this is a very strong reason right well no actually it's not that strong as i told you but maybe the gen 4 ssd uh is a strong reason but i think is gen 4 ssds are pretty darn expensive like the cheapest i want to about ssd that's m.2 gen 4 is like for around 200 bucks that's a lot of money you know for a high-end pc that doesn't perform that good at gaming you know when you compare it to intel they are cheaper the amd cpus are pretty darn cheap right now they're not as cheap as they used to be and i think that has to do something with the next you know a uh, reveal of the next gen or uh, ryzen 4000 cpus but i don't know why but nevertheless they are still cheaper than the intel cpus you don't have to go with like an aftermarket cooler uh which like a good aftermarket cooler that would help you know overclock the intel cpu would cost around 70 bucks at uh, the cheapest one while you know amd cpus you don't actually need to overclock the cpu that much because it's not that good at overclocking let's be you know um like honest with that and the aftermarket cooler gets the job done pretty well so yeah uh, this is a good reason why amd is better than intel because it saves you more money you know and you can spend it on other places and the other reason the b550 boards the b550 boards are a pretty cheap boards that support you know pcie gen 4 gen 4 ssds and they don't have that special extra 4 pin cable that you know a motherboard like z490 board that intel uh, needs that gives you the full potential of its cpu you can still get the full potential of your cpu when it comes to overclocking you know all these beautiful stuff usb type c on the b550m boards so that's like an extra saving but uh, so we're looking at another way like b550m boards are not that cheap anyways they are ranging from 100 to even 180 bucks some of them are actually more expensive than x570 but again you don't have to get this like really special power supplies that you know uh needs an extra four pin so you can fully power your board do overclocking you and the last reason 
AMD is so cheap. <laughs> Again, <laughs> we're getting to back to the first point, I believe. Like you can get a B450 M board and it would still get the job done and it would support the next gen Ryzen 4000 series CPUs. I, the, again, like the B360 M Z490 would, you know, support the next gen 11th gen CPUs, but when will they drop? And uh, yeah, that's I'm pretty sure about it. Like, yeah. So it comes down to really your preference and what you want to sacrifice. But keep in mind the 15% difference is only with the GPU like an RTX 3070 when you compare a CPU like uh, the 3700X with a CPU like the Intel i5-10600K with a GPU like an RTX 2080 Ti which is equivalent to the RTX 3070 so we're not that far away. It may get better, it may even stay the same, it's really interesting to know assuming the PCIe Gen 4 might play its game there but I, I don't think it would but how much you're actually paying for that 15% difference? Let's find out. For the CPU for example we're looking at you know um an i5-10600K or maybe an i7-10700 100k if we're looking at like apples to apples comparison but we're not doing that so 290 bucks for the 10600k 130 bucks for a board like the cheapest d490 board so you can overclock the cpu 70 percent for a cpu cooler like the be quiet cooler or like the cooler master rgb liquid cooler whatever you want to go for 100 for a power supply because you need that that power supply that has that extra four pin cable so you can you know unleash the full potential of overclocking uh so which uh brings the total cost to around 600 bucks and if you want to go with the 10700k it will get you to around 700 bucks but just keep in mind it doesn't give you that gaming performance it just gives you that extra four threads that you might want in like cpu intensive uh, tasks like rendering or editing while when you're looking at amd we're looking at 290 bucks for a cpu which is the ryzen 7 3700x which is in my opinion the sweet spot if you're not gonna upgrade to the ryzen 4000 series anytime soon or a cpu that would hold you fine until that in my opinion because the ryzen 5 3600 is pretty darn expensive but you know getting to our point 120 bucks for a board like a b550m a ors gigabyte board would do the trick we're not paying any money on the cooler because we have that sock cooler but let's say if you want to actually spend some money on the cooler let's add that 70 bucks as an optional thing and 70 dollars for a power supply because you don't need that extra four pins so it's not there you know so you can't cheap out any power supply and still get the most out of your money in terms of performance so it brings out the total for like 470 bucks in terms of you know without the cpu cooler and 540 bucks uh with a cpu cooler so we're saving 60 bucks there but keep in mind we are looking at an 8 core 16 threaded cpu that's pretty significant when it comes to you know the cpu intensive task compared to the 10600k but when we're looking at when we're comparing a 10700k setup to like a ryzen 7 3700x setup we're looking at nearly 160 bucks and that's a lot of money so for every one percent you're pretty much paying around at 10 bucks so that's big so the bottom line is the people like the reason why people lean towards amd because it's cheaper it has a lot of features that intel doesn't have yet and also make sure that you will be bottlenecked so damn hard if you decided to go for amd and pair it with the gpu like an rtx 3090 like really you'd be really bottlenecked but looking at the bright side if you decided to game on 4k or 144p that bottlenecking would go away like really hard would be looking at five percent difference and looking at the best thing possible if you're like on a really high rush and a hurry like amd will announce uh their next gen ryzen 4000 series uh somewhere in early october so really though uh, this comparison would fade away once Ryzen 4000 series drops and we would hope we'd find performance close to the Intel high-end CPUs but let me know what do you think I'm pretty sure we'd go near that Intel you know performance and we would finally like get a really stable solid 240 FPS a gaming experience on games like Fortnite I don't know Warzone I'm pretty sure we'd get that so yeah with that said I guess AMD is a better option because Ryzen 4000 series is on its way and maybe we get like 10 to 15% more performance I'm guesstimating 10% at the lowest you know estimation or at my lowest hopes if you're not going to go with this like you know a PCIe gen for which will not affect gaming that much again um, but we're yet to see or you don't want that gen 4 SSD because it's so damn expensive and you're okay paying money on a CPU cooler and a, like a really reliable power supply uh, but it's you know more expensive than what you would pay on an AMD setup uh, the Intel CPUs like really gives you a great 
gaming performance and pretty much the same gaming performance when it comes to editing so it comes down to you if you don't want to wait for the Ryzen 4000 series so with that said if you like that video press on that like button and if it's actually like a helpful video for you uh, let me know what CPU or what brand are you gonna go uh, for yeah I'm looking forward to knowing that and thank you for watching I'll see you in the next one peace